four wins and six losses later. The 9 and 6 Bucks had a chance to clinch their first division title with a win over the Chiefs in their season finale in rain-soaked Tampa Stadium. With the game scoreless in the fourth quarter, the Bucks stood on the threshold of a championship. 19-yard field goal attempt. It is a low snap. The kick is up. Good! The Buccaneers are Central Division champions. They go to the playoffs. The players are really whooping it up on the sidelines. This is quite a sight to see. Against Detroit, it was not a day for offense, but another day for the defense. Come on, D, let's go, baby! On D, on oh, D! Let's go, defense, baby! Come on, hold them, hold them, hold them! Bob, we'll get the ball now. We got two minutes. That's it. Baby. It ain't over yet, Ron. We got to get it and go now. I need big play now. Let's go. Pick it up, Tony. Let's pick it up. Gosh, down. Let's go, baby. Come on, Bob. Let's go. Come on, Tony. Come on. Last play of the game. Come on, Bob. Let's go. Get him, Bob. George, get down there. the 49ers stood between Dallas and something they had never won, the NFC Championship. From Pittsburgh as the Dolphins coming in looking to uh, finally win a game and this game delayed due to inclement weather early on. 25 minute delay you see the grounds crew repainting the field and as a result the yard lines and the hash marks actually washed away. Eventually Ricky Williams would make his game and make his first appearance in 99 weeks. Uh, Joey Porter the former Steeler back in Pittsburgh for the first time since moving on last summer. First quarter TD, Steelers first drive. Eight plays in, Ben Roethlisberger trying to find Hyde's Ward, and look who it is, it's Joey Porter. His with old the teammate, he knows Big Ben very well. And boy, you know Porter's gonna enjoy this. <laughs> as you can see him mouthing the words to Steelers fans, I know you love me, as Joey makes the uh, first move on Monday night. Roethlisberger would try to answer that. Later in the first quarter, Miami has it on a third and four. Williams on his first carry. In over two years' time, it's a five-yard pickup. Dolphins would be forced to punt. Second quarter, game still scoreless. Dolphins on a third down play. The handoff to Williams hit by James Farrier, and that would force the fumble recovered by Lawrence Timmons. Still a little rusty, you know, hasn't had a lot of contact, and this is what happens when you have you know, he hasn't played in a while. Was that a purposely done there by Timmons? You see him step on his shoulder. That way. Williams talking to some of the medical staff people on the sidelines. He would eventually leave the game. Williams would not return. So his first appearance, a very brief one. As we pick it up, third quarter, John Beck nowhere to go. Sacked by Farrier and Larry Foote, a loss of eight yards. Steelers recover at their own 39. Steelers have it on a first down play. The handoff to Willie Parker, who's running it for five yards. And going in TD, you had to expect that Pittsburgh would use their ground game against Miami. No ground defense, but this wasn't the case early on as both teams kind of go back and forth. And here Miami trying to make some things happen later in the game. Jesse Chapman 
crumples to the ground hurt, he would leave the game. So that means their third string running back, Patrick Cobb, would be thrust into a prominent role. The drive would end with a Dolphins punt. Brandon Field kicks. The ball just sticks in the mud. This pretty much sums up the night. I don't think I've ever seen this before. It's kind of like a Tiger Woods approach shot in the run in the yeah, lane. It just stays there. It just sticks into the mud there. And suing Pittsburgh possession, Jeff Reed with the kick, not even close in a 44-yard attempt. So the game would remain scoreless. Fourth quarter, Dolphins next possession. A.J. Feely with a 38-yard attempt, but hold on a second. A flag on the play. Referees would call a delay of game on the Dolphins. This pushes the Finns back to a fourth and 11 situation. Cam Cameron says, I'm going to go for it. Likes his chances better in this kind of a situation. But John Beck is hammered by James Harrison Pittsburgh from behind. defense is pretty tough against the pass, number one. And the ball TV dislodged. Aaron Smith would come up with it. Now, after forcing Miami to punt late in the game from their own end zone, second and eight play, it's Ben to Hines Ward for 21 yards. Second and 14, it's Roethlisberger to Ward again, this time for 11. So with two and change left to play, you had the feeling Pittsburgh was finally closing in on our first points of this game. Third down, it's Willie Reed inside the 10. And that would give the Steelers a first and goal. First down and goal. It's Ben to Parker. This one deflected by Joey Porter. Had a big defensive hand in this game. Second and goal. It's Parker up the gut for a yard. Third down and goal. Pittsburgh looking for some late game magic. Roethlisberger trying to buy himself some time. He has hit hard behind the line of scrimmage. Scrambles, but he sets up Jeff Reed. And here he is. A chip shot for the win. And he splits the uprights. So Jeff Reed is the hero in TD. Took nearly 60 minutes of work, but the Pittsburgh Steelers finally put some points on the board late. Ben Roethlisberger looks up to the rainy heavens as uh, Mike Tomlin looks on. The Steelers go on to win a 13th straight game at home on Monday Night Football. And again, it took them nearly the entire length of this game, but the Steelers finally score three to nothing is your final score. The uh, last scoreless game, by the way, in NFL history, 1943. How many stagehands have experienced dreams of taking center stage and stopping the show? In the dead of a New England winter, one such dream came true. Frostbitten Foxborough Stadium had been transformed into a white wasteland. And when the Miami Dolphins arrived to play the Patriots, this elite unit suddenly found itself on Skid Row. Come game time, the place kickers of both squads were stymied by the slick turf, and a scoreless tie existed until the final moments. Then, Patriots head coach Ron Meyer called on an unexpected source to set the wheels in motion for victory. Snowplow driver Mark Henderson, a convicted burglar, employed at the stadium on a weekend work furlough program, rode to the rescue. In the process, he drove Don Shula crazy. I should have somehow stopped the action, but I was bewildered. I, I really was bewildered about what was happening out there on the field in front of my eyes. And if I had it all to do over again, I would have run off the sideline and thrown myself in front of this tractor and prevented it from sweeping that place clean for the field goal kicker to kick the field goal through to beat us. Henderson cleared a path for a field goal that gave the Patriots a three to nothing triumph, an outcome the Dolphins still regard with icy disdain. That kind of thing should not occur as a result of somebody putting a snowplow run by a convict with a day off from prison. Where else but in the nebulous nether region of pro football could a hired hand be transformed into a hard driving hero? Reach up with their hands and make some contact with them. 24-yard attack. Oh, oh, he hits the upright. It's no good. How in the world? That's the reason. <laughs> I'm just telling you. A minute left in overtime. And Wilson fires it to the outside. And yeah. Baldwin stays inbounds. And Baldwin takes the ball inside the 10. John Ryan to hold. Oh. And he misses it. That's impossible. Oh, my God. That is impossible.
possible. Uh, I'm telling you, there's something inside his brain about this building. Woo! Oh, my goodness gracious. That could not have happened. You know what? Maybe this is justice for all concerned. Oh, man. I guess if a game deserves to wind up in a tie, this is the one. Ryan push it down. Hauschka just pulls it. I'm just telling you, and we've watched this, Al. Every kick that Hauschka has made tonight, he has gone up and fooled around with the turf and felt uncomfortable. I don't know if he stuck his foot in the ground. That first field goal barely cleared. He kind of chunked that one a little bit. And maybe the happiest guy in the building right now is Chandler Catanzaro. Oh, my goodness. And Larry Fitzgerald watching. Peterson watching. Ball at the 20-yard line. So do you settle for the tie or do you air one out here and hope for a pass interference penalty that would extend the game? Three-man rush. Palmer. Running away. He's going to air one out. All the way downfield. Jump ball. Incomplete. <laughs> A bomb and incomplete Fitzgerald the intended man in the end zone and that's the way it will end.